Y'all gonna leave comedians alone. Especially ones that have been in the game as long as Dave Chappelle. And especially like comedians like Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock who at this point you know what you're getting. <sighs> What's wrong with y'all? Fendi like the bag. <laughs> This is the I Refuse Podcast. I'm Mr. Fox of the I Refuse Podcast. I am back. Y'all just absolutely refuse to give me time off because y'all are acting up in these streets. If it's not you, it's somebody you know. Uh, if it's not somebody you know, it's somebody you've seen before or you've seen that kind of thing in somebody you know. But... Y'all really are showing out today, these days. You know, ever since the Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, <sighs> human nature, man. Like, human nature just cannot resist being about copying or bottling actions and behaviors and attitudes off of people, I guess, you look up to or people you think are a big deal and bringing that shit into your regular Joe Schmo lives like Dave Chappelle is doing a comedy show in a really nice venue look like an opera house definitely look like something similar to the Meyerhoff and either it was like in the beginning, first half, or the middle part, or towards the end of his set, a man decides, probably from a high price seat that he paid, or a high price seat that somebody else paid for, he gave them half of his money, uh, to run up from his seat on stage and tackle Dave Chappelle. <sighs> when I saw that, my first thought was back to a a skit or a section of Chris, one of Chris Rock's live shows back in the 90s called uh, Negroes versus Black People. Like, I love black people, but you know, that, that subset over there that just can't get it together, just has to act out in intimate, close quarter venues and rooms, like putting other people at risk or changing the energy in the room by acting out or, you know, alerting people, putting people on edge. Yeah, um, like I paid good money to see this comedy show or see this movie, and there are but only a few exits, a uh, few exit routes, and you are very much giving me whatever you're doing over there, like crazy subway band vibes. Like, I just want to get to my next stop. I just want to get home unscathed, undisheveled, not full of adrenaline, not thinking I'm in I'm Legend or, you know, Resident Evil or um, The Purge. Like, I don't, I just want no problems. You know what I mean? So I saw that and I, that was my first thought was with Chris Rock mentioned, you know, in that 12 minutes get back in the 90s, where it's just like, you come out to, to culture. You come out to like eat, have a good time, really get into the arts, which people tend to forget that comedy is an art form. Um, it's been around since Jesus times. You know, black Jesus times. And 
y'all aren't really cutting up. Y'all just don't know what to do with yourselves. You're either like threatening or going, trying to go toe to toe with comedians up on stage, swinging the mic stand because you can't take a joke. Um, even though everybody knows sitting near the stage at a comedy set, you're opening yourself up to that, to being to being heckled or being cracked on. It's happened to me a couple times, and the shit was funny. The only thing is, for me, like, when it comes to comedy sets, if it's not funny, I won't laugh. If it is funny, I will laugh. It's just that simple. Um, if it's thought-provoking, I walk away from, you know, the comedy set, thinking about it, you know, and then looking at life differently or changing my perspective. If it's something that other people may find offensive, I might be like, oh, maybe not that one. Um, but I'm not lighting myself on fire. I'm not lighting my social media account on fire. I mean, some shit you just leave where it's at. Um, unless you're like planning to be about some real change and go into, you know, authorities and representatives that you put into office. But nobody's going to go that far. Um, but anyway, like, seeing that, you know, my second thought was, you know, the Will Smith's Chris Rock slap has opened the floodgates and has implored or empowered people to get physical. Um, I don't know the particulars behind what inspired the man to tackle Dave Chappelle, um, but it's not lost on me that it may have been related to the the narrative that's out there about Dave Chappelle and his material, uh, what's implied that he may be transphobic. Uh, maybe, you know, he said something in this this particular night that the guy found offensive. Uh, or maybe the guy's just not wrapped too tight in general. I don't know. I do know that they said he had a gun on him. Um, there is speculation or an allegation that he also had a knife on him. <sighs> I really want y'all to stop watching these uh, Charles Bronson movies and these old ass Clint Eastwood movies and thinking, you know, every venue or every space is your time to live out, you know, your street fighter powers or whatever. Or in this case, like, a John Madden tackle on artists and musicians and like y'all just really need to chill. Um it's it's all about like reading the room, but also leaving people alone, you know what I mean? And it's like I said, we pay good money to be in this concert hall. Um, you know, it's, it's very rare for people that look like us to be able, for them to allow us to perform in these big venues, these concert halls and these symphony halls and these opera houses just to do comedy. And here we are tackling people. Please, like, what, what's going on? Like, and then my third thought, this is really going to blow y'all out the water is long term you know what this is really saying to me and a lot of people out here is that people that are uncomfortable let's just say that's just like the baseline people are uncomfortable with the material people are uncomfortable with the joke, right? You pay good money. And by the time Dave Chappelle got to um, Sticks and Stones, 
you know, people really started to pay attention. You know, there are a lot of us who have been aware of Dave Chappelle since his DC comedy circuit days and his deaf comedy jam days from back in the early 90s. Half-Baked, The Chappelle Show. Um, so that's where we are, most of us. And with that, we know we, we're getting into. But I was noticing that around Sticks and Stones and moving forward, um, people were, there would be some people that would watch it, um, and then I could just naturally assume that they talked about it with other people, and it was more opinion-based than critical thinking-based, and, you know, it was more a conversation about what they found offensive, um, they probably cherry picked, I'm just theorizing, they probably cherry picked, uh, meaning certain certain pieces, removed the context, based their opinion off of that, and then delivered that particular narrative to people over here. And then, you know, if it's a person that is of a certain dem demographic, that a specialized demographic, um, a demographic that's very popular is in the the journalism world or blogs or whatever and has that same or similar perspective and they write a story or a blog post based off of that. And, you know, we're in the social media, couple clicks to get a story think everything on the internet's credible and uh, valuable and we base our whole personality and life and uh, perspective of the world from the comfort of our office chairs or laptops and we think we have it all figured out didn't watch the, the comedy special um, didn't or didn't watch it completely. Um, you know, I had a... In one of his more recent uh, stand-up specials on Netflix, um, you know, Dave Chappelle reflected on, like, Sticks and Stones and uh, Equanimity. And uh, there was one previous special in between those two and then this most recent one. Um, and, you know, there were two people in the audience, maybe two or three rows from the stage. Again, probably paid good money. Um, and throughout the, the special, they were just, everybody else was laughing or everybody else was mentally taking in the material. And throughout the whole special, these two people were just not amused, lifeless, looking at each other and just nodding like this way. And just, it was just very intense and very uncomfortable. And it's like, okay, we know where they're coming from. And it's, and it's a, and it, that perspective is that I have of that is just a pattern. You know what I mean? You know, where people, no longer go to comedy shows or comedy specials or cultural events to be entertained. They go to judge and criticize and show A, how uncomfortable they are and B, how they're not there for the comedy. They just want a moment to, to not, to show everybody they don't want to be there. But they'll sit an hour and a half or however long he was in Atlanta uh, those couple of nights. Because I realized some of his Netflix specials, the audience changes, uh, which means they edited and put together the two or so nights he was in a particular spot to make a two-hour special. But I was noticing, like, when they were in the audience, it was just like, 
clearly you're not here for the comedy. Clearly you're here to show your prejudice and to find an issue to go home and get on some chat forum or get on to some, some soapbox or speak piece and spread a particular narrative to further acerbate or further turn people off um, and make a snap judgment that contributes more to the flames and the fire, right? I watched the special. I enjoyed it. There was mention of a trans person that came to one of his shows. This was a different person he had mentioned in an earlier special that uh, took, uh, took issue, I believe, but also made a big scene. Um, and it struck David. Dave Chappelle, a Virgo like me, that stuff sh strikes us, and we, you know, we change appropriately. Uh, but at some point, the two of them became friends over time, and if people had actually watched the entire comedy special in its entirety, they would have caught the anecdote at the end of the set, towards the end of the set, where Dave Chappelle humanizes trans people. Because, you know, in the antidote, he he got to know this person. And to the point that when the person uh, committed suicide, it, it cut him deeply. And, you know, what people fail to realize is that you know, this generalization, casting a broad brushstroke on on a surface level with comedians and, you know, people without having an actual conversation or speaking with or even imploring your own critical thinking makes it worse. Like, you're really, and not just you or anybody, but all of us just are are lacking a great sense of awareness and education and insight into each other because we continue to do shit like that. Um, you know, people go off of a snippet and and make a snap whole judgment off of a comedian, um, not realizing that this comedian is a black comedy comic, um, a dark hum humor comic. which means he takes an uncomfortable uh, taboo subject and he turns it into something that's funny. Doesn't mean that he actually does it in real life or he's into that personally. It's just, that's what it is. And, you know, a lot of awareness and a lot of the responsibility that comes with awareness and being informed is on the person watching it um, or the person retweeting it, it's not on the comic. Uh, they've been doing this for years and they know what they're doing. Uh, I think a lot of us that are at home that don't go out and touch a blade of grass uh, really need to, to enlighten ourselves. And Right now, it's looking like, and this is my fourth point, it's looking like people are on a mission to, a problematic mission to take rights and freedoms and license and creativity from people, from other people. It's like this isn't this isn't like a pie where it's like you take all of it and I have none. Like we all have rights to do what we do, 
we all have freedoms and liberties. And it's funny to me because, you know, everybody, most people are on this patriotic kick and this country and land and, you know, this, this whole bit. But, you know, people only get to a certain point on, you know, just going off of self and what's gratifying and what benefits them with no consideration of other people. Like Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Cat Williams, um what's the what's the one guy? I the the Instagram, one of the Instagram uh I think it's Drewski. You know, the Instagram comedians, the social media comedians, you know, Ryan Davis, um, Kev on stage, like, comedy. Like, y'all out here trying to cancel culture, and it's like, you won't be satisfied until this this whole society is just a blank slate, can't perform or do certain things um, because you don't get the joke or you're uncomfortable and it's like you know every joke is not going to hit there are some dry spots and some spots and specials where it's like you know that was that was lazy you can do better than that um but i think that's where we're head headed and you know you now that you're, people are getting physical, tackling people, slapping people, live on stage, it's starting to be, it's starting to look real tacky of us. Just real tacky. Um, you know, it's showing that how regressive we are as individuals and how we're not making a whole lot of sense. Like, you spent good money because trust somebody that goes to concerts or looks at like seating prices the first five or six rows at least four figures and he was able this guy to tackle Dave Chappelle to just go and Security was slow. I mean, they apprehended the guy because, you know, it didn't, he didn't plan that too well, execute that too well. Like, you tackle Dave Chappelle and you do like a U line, almost like you didn't know where the hell you were going. And you got tackled and punched, rightfully so. Tackled and punched and apprehended and, you know, confined to a stretcher with straps and stuff. Looking real, looking real Hannibal lecturers, lecturers. And we'll probably never know. We'll probably never know what, why he did it and what for. Um, if he was with people they probably all embarrassed as hell. Probably like we not let we not bringing him out no more. If he calls, send that shit straight to voicemail. If you got an iPhone, you can delete the contact and enable that capability that sends unknown numbers to voicemail. It sil silences uh, callers. But yeah, like embarrassing. And it's, it's, it's crazy and dangerous and silly. And I really want y'all, people that do shit like that, not just like ignorance, but this performative thing, because, you know, where the goal is, you want to take something from somebody because you're uncomfortable like feelings and these uh these thoughts are not facts they change all the time but 
you get gratification and validation off of silencing or trying to silence, silence, uh, take opportunities and take jobs away from people, but your you're human. That's 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 how we rolling. Like. Because it's, it's very much giving regime, you know what I mean? It's very much giving um, 1950s. And I'm noticing that, like, it's happening more. It's The target is more towards people that look like me. I could go into a whole other thing about that. But it's it's crazy. And it's and I find it's it's coming more from people that have all this time. Um, and all this energy, but no worthwhile contribution to society and like no, nothing like constructive and nothing critical um, outside of people that eat that kind of nonsense up and follow behind them all the time. You know, Dave Chappelle came out and, you know, people were glad to see that he was okay. And I believe he finished the rest of his set. <sighs> True professional. Again, we pay good money. You know, with the price of everything going up, we're serious about the money we pay. And, you know, I know Dave Chappelle's going to give a great show. Um, and, you know, Chris Rock came out and said, well, was that Will Smith? Too funny, and Jamie Foxx came out came out in the sheriff hat. Also, I was like, "What is going on?" That was a lot. But yeah, y'all really need to stop acting up in these um these nice venues that these uh these white people white people done set up four hundred some odd years ago for uh, good cultured events because. You can't control yourselves. You want a moment. Like, you embarrassing yourself for what? Like, save that energy for people that are up on the hill and taking rights away and, like, protest peacefully. And you just had to be, you just had to be one of us. I'm tired. I'm exhausted, and I've had coffee. Uh, I'm gonna need y'all to really grow up and get yourselves together and leave the comedians alone. Like, you're doing the absolute most physically off of little to no knowledge and a lot of nonsense in between. Do better, folks. This is Mr. Fox, the I Refuse podcast. Be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you see us. Um, I see the subscribers are going up, and I see the likes are going up. I appreciate all the love. You guys are making me, like, full in spirit, and it's inspiring me to keep going. You know, we don't mean any harm over here. We just get up on here, no script, no agenda, just straight from the hip. Uh, so there it is. Uh, take it easy, stay hydrated, and keep your eyes on your own paper. Bye.